Welcome to another episode of Chopstick Travel. I'm Luke Martin and today we are in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So today we're going to be taking you around the famous Chinatown here. One of the best parts about Kuala Lumpur is the diversity of its cuisine. So you have Indian, Chinese and Malay influences and Chinatown is a hot spot for all your Chinese food needs. So we're going to show you some of the best spots to eat authentic Chinese food here in Chinatown KL. It's going to be a great day, so let's go. So we are sitting down at our first stop. This place is called Hun Ki. It's been open since 1949 and this is one of the most popular places here in Chinatown. And they're serving a really unique dish that I've actually never tried before. We have it here. It's actually raw fish porridge. So here we have a plate of the raw fish. It's kind of marinating in this sesame oil and a little bit of ginger and some coriander. And then back here we have the porridge, which is smoking hot. Again, a little bit of uh, sesame oil on top and then some green onions. So I guess the way you're supposed to do this is you take some of the uh, raw fish. You can see just this beautiful thinly sliced raw fish and put it right into your porridge and it'll kind of cook away because this porridge is so hot. So I'm not exactly sure how long I'm supposed to leave it for. I'll let it go for a minute. And it's not supposed to cook fully all the way through, just enough to kind of blanch it. That should be good. And then I'll grab my spoon here. Oh, this looks good. This is a really unique dish. Mm. Oh yeah, I love the sesame oil. It's a really bread rip. The fish is so soft. It's still not like completely cooked, so it's very tender. Mm. That porridge, very, very thick porridge. Yeah, and very, very hot. All that ginger in there too. Oh, this is actually a nice little dish. I'm gonna grab quite a bit of this fish and just kind of throw it all in there. This is actually really tasty, I love it. I'm not sure we're doing it right, so let us know down in the comment box if we did it wrong. I think the fish might be a little overcooked now, but uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of this white pepper here too. That'll go nicely with it. This shop opens at 4.30 a.m. So it's a perfect thing to have for breakfast. Very light and healthy feeling. That was super, super good. Make sure to uh, check for the sign that says 1949 Hongki because there are some other restaurants in this area that serve the same dish, apparently. Uh, beware of imitation so <laughs> just be careful because this one was really good so I recommend this one. What's up guys I just wanted to take a minute to thank today's sponsor ExpressVPN. For those of you who don't know a VPN or virtual private network is the best way to ensure total online security. All you have to do is open the app and with one click I'm connected to a secure server in Singapore. One of the most common reasons I use ExpressVPN is for watching Netflix. So you may or may not know, some shows are unavailable in the country that you are in. So for example, when Sabrina and I are traveling in Asia, we like to watch The Office, but The Office is only available in America or Canada. So all I have to do is switch my VPN to Canada or America and boom, I'm able to watch The Office. So even if you're not traveling, it's still a great tool to access content that isn't available in your home country. So you can just switch your VPN and you'll have loads of other content available to you. Chopstick travel viewers are getting their first three months free with ExpressVPN by visiting expressvpn.com slash chopstick travel or clicking the link in the description box. So back to the show. So that wasn't quite enough for breakfast. We're gonna head to a noodle shop now that's quite famous that serves clam ginger noodles. And I definitely recommend you come to Chinatown during the daytime and the nighttime because the vibe is completely different. It feels a little bit less touristy during the day to be honest. So we are at a place called Lai Fong Restaurant. There's actually a bunch of different little stalls in here. It's kind of like a food court and it is packed in here. But we came for the la la noodles, those clam noodles. So let's go find a seat. I'm not exactly sure how this place works. We're gonna get to the la la Over here. I 
I think the noodles are almost here. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Here we go. Thank you. All right, let's dig in. Okay, we have the Lala noodles. These look so good. I'm gonna take the bowl off the plate here because I can use this plate kind of as a garbage can for my clam shells. So we have these bihun, which are the uh, vermicelli noodles here. Looks like there's some green onions in here. Tons and tons of these clams. You can see all of those clams in there. And then there is a ton of ginger. You can't really see it. Well, you can see it a little bit, but I can just smell it. And then there is also a lot of chili. So I think it's gonna be a little bit spicy. So let me try first the broth. Oh, oh, that is awesome. That is so strong ginger flavor. And that is quite spicy. It hit me right in the back of the throat. It's not like the developing spice. It's like the instantaneous spice. Okay, I gotta go in, try some of these noodles. These very, very thin bihun um, vermicelli noodles, which are perfect for soaking up all of that broth. Mmm. <coughs> Whoa, that's got a kick to it. Oh, really good noodles. They're still firm actually, but the size of the noodle, or the circumference of the noodle is so small, and there's so many of them, so it just completely attaches to all that broth. And it's like a really good medium just for basically drinking the broth through the noodles. So let me try to pick this out. These are tiny little clams, and we've also been served a chili sauce on the side here. I'm not sure, it looks like maybe chili soy or chili vinegar. Get that nice and saturated. Nice and juicy clam. It's definitely soaked up some of that broth too. They are quite small and that chili sauce has a kick to it. This is all quite spicy, but I have to say the best part is just this broth. It's just got this clear consistency, but don't be fooled, that is packed full of flavor. And it's not too oily too, which I like. Mm. Oh, this is a great bowl of noodles. <laughs> spicy. Oh my God. Finish up with our noodles. Those were pretty good. The broth was delicious, but I will say that those clams, the lala, they didn't taste as fresh as I had hoped. Some of them didn't taste very good, and a lot of them hadn't opened, so they weren't fully cooked. But really cool atmosphere, super hectic and crazy in here. We were quite full after that, and that was a nice spicy bowl of noodles. So let's uh, check out Chinatown. I think there's a temple nearby that we're gonna check out. So right across the street from the Lala noodle shop is this temple here. This is the oldest Taoist temple here in Kuala Lumpur or maybe in all of Malaysia. And it's pretty prominent, especially during times like Chinese New Year for Chinese Malaysians and visitors alike. And uh, yeah, we're going inside to check it out. So far, it looks really cool. It's kind of hidden. It's always cool to visit a Chinese temple. It's always really peaceful and the smell of the incense really sets the atmosphere. It feels very unique and this temple has got a cool vibe to a very old feeling. So the main thoroughfare here in Chinatown is Pedaling Street. We are on it right now, it's covered. A lot of just shops kind of selling clothes and watches and random things. But at nighttime, this place really comes to life and it's kind of like a night market. During the day though, also nice to walk around. There's not too much good food right directly on this street, but the places we've been showing you are in the surrounding area. And we're gonna walk around and maybe snack a little bit more. Yeah, 
So we are stopped at this shop here. It's got a huge line. They're serving lots of soybean products, but we're going to try their dohua, which is like a soybean tofu pudding. And big line, really popular. I'm excited to try it. So we have our dohua, our tofu pudding, or here they call it tofu fa. And I think they've added some gula malaka, which is palm sugar, and it is served hot. He's got a massive like cauldron full of the silken tofu. And this is one of my favorite desserts of all times, but I've never had it served like piping hot like this before. So let me try. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah, that is silky, smooth, velvety. The texture of it is just so unique and delicious. The flavor is just like soybean milk, but then it's also got a sweetness from, I believe it's palm sugar that they've sprinkled all over top of it. Mm. That is good, I like it hot. And this place is so popular, only one ring it 80 sen for this, so very, very cheap. And they're just pumping out the dohua. It is hot and sweaty here on Pedaling Street in Chinatown, but this is still good, even though it's served really hot. So right across the street from Kim Soya Bean is a stall that serves dried long and juice. We're gonna head over there and get some. Thank you. So we made just a little quick stop for this. This is dried longan juice, and dried longan is actually a very common thing. They serve it in these big bags, and actually at the very bottom, you can see that there are big chunks, if I can find it, of longan pieces. There they are. Looks delicious. Served ice cold, very cheap, only two ringgits. Let's give it a try. Mm. Wow, that's very refreshing. It's been sweetened, so if you like sweet drinks, this is right up your alley and very, very refreshing. Tastes wonderful. Mm. That's good, cool off. It's so hot here. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely really sweet. It's almost like syrupy, and it's kind of got a plum flavor. Longan fruit is pretty unique. It's one of my favorite things, actually, just to snack on, so this is a nice drink. We just stopped in this little shop and they offered us a sample of dried durian. Never tried this. Oh yeah, it's like concentrated durian. It almost has the texture of like a hard cotton candy. Wow, I can't eat too much of that. It's just gonna make my whole breath smell like durian. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Thanks. So it is now the hottest part of the day. The sun is just beaming down. So I think we're gonna take a little bit of a break. Our bellies are full and we are gonna head back out tonight for some Chinese dinner. So we are back out for dinner. We are not actually in Chinatown, but we are still having Chinese food. We are in an area of KL called Pudu, and we have come to a clay pot restaurant. And I would tell you the name, but there is no name. And I'm really excited. I've heard that this is a really good clay pot. So we're gonna order one up, and he's cooking this on charcoal. I can smell it already. We're gonna check out the process. I think it's gonna be a little bit of a wait. And then we're gonna have our clay pot chicken. <laughs> So we're right on the side of the road. He's got all the different clay pots here. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 of them going all at once, all cooking on charcoal, really blazing hot. And I think there's a couple different uh, combinations of toppings that you can get, but we're just gonna go with the classic chicken. And it smells really good. That charcoal smells awesome. What's the name? Huh? What's the name? Yeah. Amen. 
One six eight. Uh, three pot chicken rice. Okay. So as I mentioned, there's no real name to this clay pot chicken restaurant. They just call it 168, which is the address of the restaurant. And there are some seats just across the street, some outdoor seats, just plastic tables. And I've heard it's a bit of a wait for the clay pot chicken. So we put in our order, we're waiting now. I'm really hungry, so I'm excited to eat this. So while we're waiting for our food, we looked around and we noticed that everyone at this restaurant had a bright green drink. So we asked what it was and it was this lime juice with a plum inside, as you can see. So we ordered ours up and we got it iced, so let's give it a try. Yeah, it's a little sour, a little sweet, and a little salty too from that salted plum inside. It's good, I think it'll pair up with the food well. So first he'll start with just the rice in the clay pot with some water cooking the rice. While it's cooking, he will put together a bowl of chicken. I saw some garlic and ginger paste. He put some thick soy sauce and a couple other ingredients. And then he'll put all of that, the meat and all of that sauce on top of the rice and let it cook away. So now we have our large bowl of the rice. And what you wanna do here is kind of mix it around because there's a lot of that sweet soy sauce and you want it to distribute evenly. You can see there's some Chinese sausage right there. There's big chunks of chicken. I think there may be some liver or maybe it's heart, but also one of the joys of clay pot is that that rice will kind of cook to the side of the pot because this thing is seriously hot still when it's served you at the table and then it'll get nice and crispy. You can see lots of green onions in there as well. Look at that. And this just smells so good. You can smell that smoky charcoal aroma. Big scoop, put it in my bowl. And let's try that. Oh man. Oh yeah, you can taste that smokiness. There's a lot of that thick soy sauce though. And it's got a little bit of a bitterness to it. I'm not sure if that's because it's been cooked uh, too long, that soy sauce, and maybe burnt a little bit. But the sweetness coming from it is also nice. The helpings of chicken are certainly generous. Check out those huge chunks. And look at this. We've even got a full chicken wing in there. Some of that rice has started to crisp on the side. And I gotta look for a piece of Chinese sausage in there. I haven't had one of those yet. Where is it? Okay. Yes, there's a piece right there. Okay, I'll put this on my plate. And I gotta try that Chinese sausage, which is one of my favorite ingredients in the world. The sausage has little bits of fat in it that are kind of chewy, and then the rest of it is just dried, so it's got a jerky type texture, but very sweet in flavor. It goes well with that rice, but there's a bitterness. I'm not exactly sure where the bitterness is coming from. So although the atmosphere here is really cool and inside this the chicken is really good, this is not the best clay pot we've ever had. But it is good, we just find it's a little bit bitter, maybe a little bit burnt. Whew, that was really filling, a lot of rice in there. The chicken was definitely the best part and other than that, wasn't our favorite. But really cool setup and the atmosphere is awesome. What a day of eating Chinese food. I'd have to say the best thing, in my opinion, was the raw fish porridge that we had this morning. Yep, it was delicious. It was so just natural flavored and really healthy tasting. So that's gonna be it for today's episode. Make sure if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you're notified when we post our next video. And hopefully we'll see you again from Malaysia very soon on another episode of Chops and Travel. Bye. Bye.